Right then, it looks like we are live. So, as you can see by the title, it's a car boot haul to resell on eBay and Amazon today. Um, first actual uh, outdoor car boot of the year. Uh, well, I think there might have been other ones on in my area, but this was the first sort of, the, the big car boot that is on every week from sort of April to maybe October, November. That started up, That was this was the first week. And I couldn't help but go down. Um, the field was incredibly muddy. It was, by the end of the car boot, there was only actually one row. But by the end, well, by the time I had thinking of leaving, um, that one row was just, it was just mud. There wasn't even glass there. But it was really, really nice to get out. It was really, really nice to go down. I just felt so happy when I was down there because I was back out at the car boot. So, yeah. Don't know whether I'm going to go down there next week or whether I'm going to do a couple of indoor ones. The only reason is I think it still needs a couple of weeks, really, that one to get going. And also, it was, as I say, it was terribly muddy today. So I think maybe another few weeks might ease that mud up a little bit, you know, once it, the weather improves. But I've got, a, I think I've got one or two indoor ones next week anyway. So what I might do is go to them. Because obviously they're finite ones, they're, they'll just be they'll just be like one-off ones, and then I'll do them, and then I'll go back to doing this one more regularly, and then I've got the other one that starts up uh, once a month. That that one's once a month, um, end of April. I think it's like 29th of April. So yeah, really really happy to get out. I'll just quickly look in the chat, see if anyone's jumped in. I'm not expecting me. Oh my god, loads of people have jumped in. I wasn't even expecting anyone to jump in, so it's uh, nice to uh, have you all here. Um, so we've got Sib K, we've got Adam Kelsey, we've got um, Celtic Traders, we've got um, Jason Entwistle, uh, we've got Jamie Wig. Wow, loads of people. Peter A, anyone else go to the car boot? It's really glad, I'm really glad to have you all here. I didn't think there'd be many people joining me because it's like a really impromptu stream. So yeah, without further ado, I'm going to get on with the haul because I know sometimes I have tendencies to ramble. So I'll look in the chat and I'll get on with the haul and try and balance it quite well today. So, uh, first off, this wasn't the first purchase of the day. Um, I didn't have to get this, but I kind of just like the look of it, and it's a, quite a nice, I'm just going to flip back onto my webcam so I can see where I am. Um, it's quite a nice, uh, it's actually really well embossed. Um, it's just a glass bottle, a vintage glass bottle. W. Ga Ga Ganston and, and Son? Ganston? And, no, Ganston and Co., uh, hobe edge, but it's really well embossed. It's really really nice. Probably only get about a tenner plus postage, something like that. I might even have to accept a slightly lower offer. Um, but for a quid, it was only a quid. I was walking by and I thought I can't leave it, so I'll just grab that. So yeah, just no, you know, nothing amazing, but still nice little standard bread and butter item. Now there was a woman who was there, she had um, basically unit stickers on, so like unit 36, so what I am led to believe is that maybe her unit wasn't going so well, and she had maybe pulled out of it, and then she's gone down the car boot to clear a lot of her stock, so there were some okay bits there, I picked out a few bits of Art Deco pottery, there wasn't anything like, well there was, there was like a big um, vintage I suppose you'd call it shabby chic, but it wasn't shabby chic, it was more, it was older, um, but it was in that shabby chic style, and uh, it was a really big sort of ladder, it was really nice, like a step ladder, but it was like double-sided, you know, those double-sided ones, and that was really nice, and I bet you that would have got some money, but she wanted, uh, she wanted quite a lot, but I don't know what it was, like 30 quid or something, so I don't think there would have been much more in it, and also I couldn't even get it home, so I wouldn't have been able to get it home anyway, but there was a few other bits on there, but I got I picked out these bits. Nothing special, just kind of bread and butter pottery. But we've got this uh, Carlton Ware. I suppose it's like a, a bonbon dish, a bonbon dish, or a uh, nut dish, or something like that. Um, probably like 1930s, 1920s, 1930s. Nice little piece, but probably not worth that much. Again, maybe ten pound plus postage. Maybe push a little bit more out of it. I'll have to double check. This is in the Australia pattern. I've had the of the Australian Australia design. I've had it before. It's quite nice. Um, but yeah, you know, it's quite a nice little thing. I think this should be worth a little bit more than we are. But you know, you can't argue with the market if it's it's worth what it's worth. So uh, yeah, that's that one. But it's quite nice, as you can see there. Hopefully, the webcam will 
uh, pick it up quite nicely as well. Now, there was this piece I got from a, I paid, oh sorry, I paid four quid for the three pieces. So that, I think that one was meant to be a quid. And then this, I think it was this one that was two, no, it was the shorter and some that was two quid. And then this one was a quid. Now, I don't know this maker, which, you know, I don't know a lot of makers, so it's nothing unusual. Um, this is Fernivals, Fer Fernivals, I think it is. And it has in brackets 1913 limited or 1813 limited. So I, I don't know whether that's the date or not. It looks quite Art Deco. You can see, you know, those those side bits there. They're quite Art Deco-y. So I'm guessing, again, like sort of 20s, 30s, that sort of range. Um, but it's quite a nice little bowl, as you can see. Well, it's a fair size, actually. Don't know what I'm going to charge for this. I'll have to do some research on that actual company. But again, I can't see it being much more than that maybe 15 pound mark 15 pound plus postage but it's still it's quite nice you know it's got some appeal to it as you can see you know um but yeah so i'll pick that up that would so i'm thinking that worked out maybe two quid and then the other one that has got sort of an iridescence to it i think that's how you pronounce it like you know like an iridescent look to it and it's got this uh, sort of floral design on there and it's actually got some sort of like I suppose it would be called scalloping. I don't know whether that's well, what it's called. You know, these little sort of, it looks like scallop. Um, but yeah, that's quite nice. It's Shortland Sto Sun, which is Stoke-on-Trent, which uh, wasn't really far from me. Again, I'm thinking this is Art Deco, but I'll have to do a bit more research into it. I did quickly Google uh, Shortland Sun, and a lot of their stuff was kind of, you know, that Art Deco period, 1910 to 1939, um, which I absolutely love. I just love Art Deco stuff. Uh, that's kind of what I am starting to really focus in on. You know, I like that Art Deco. Maybe I'll get into Art Nouveau stuff a little bit more as well. But I like that Art Deco stuff for now. You know, that's what I'm getting drawn to at the auctions and stuff. Um, it's a pity that, you know, it does sell. But I do feel like certain pieces should be more worth more than they are. Because I kind of, I'm attracted to them in more of a, you know, for more of a price point. But, if, you know, if other people aren't prepared to pay it, then... I've got to factor that into when I'm buying. Um, but yeah, quite a nice little piece. I don't know what this is going to go for. Um, I'm guessing it's some sort of fruit bowl or something like that. I'm not 100% not 100 sure. Um, but a lot of the short run stuff, some stuff isn't mega money. So again, I'm thinking around the same price as that other bowl. But, you know, I could be wrong. I've got to, got to have a proper look into it. I've got to research these pieces properly. But it's quite nice. I don't think it'll really pick it up amazingly on camera but it's not doing too bad actually it picks up quite nice um but yeah it does look really nice because on these like um i suppose these are little uh offshoots of a flower or something but they're really really green and they've got an iridescence to it and they're really quite nice actually but yeah again just a bread and butter kind of item um what else was there so i picked up four dvds i'll quickly look back in the chat and then i'll because i don't want to ignore the chat if you're all in there talking uh, that funny funny bulls dish made 15 to 20 if you're good. Oh, right, that's all right then. That's pretty decent. Um, how's your storing these bowls? What I'm doing is I have uh, boxes. I have cardboard boxes. And I'm putting a layer of big bubble wrap between each item. And I'm making sure that, obviously, I'm closing that box. I'm not filling it too much. I'm not putting weight, you know, too much weight on top or anything like that. And, um, yeah, I'm making sure that we're all separated quite well. Um, I have had about one breakage in the past, which wasn't very good. And it made me, it uh, wasn't like a mega, mega high value item, but it was about 20 quid item. And it made me reevaluate how I was storing these items when I was starting to get more and more of them. And I'm starting to accumulate a lot more pottery and stuff. So I am doing it, you know, cardboard box. I use my FBA boxes, actually, so when I buy... FBA boxes, I, I take a few of them, and I use them, and as I say, I bubble wrap the bottom, then put an item in, then bubble wrap over, and do it in layers like that, and as I say, I don't try and, like, overfill the boxes or anything, or put too much weight on top, and that's kind of what how I've started to do it, there's probably better ways, but I've just done that for now, um, if anyone's got any suggestions, you know, storing pottery and stuff, obviously, you could do it on a shelf, or you could do it on, maybe, I've, I've got some pottery on, like, a, uh, I don't know how to, like, it's a sort of shelf, but it's got another, I don't even know what how to describe it, actually. 
it's like a desk. Yeah, it's like a desk with shelves underneath, so it's got protection on top, so, you know, nothing's going to fall on it or anything. But I don't particularly like doing that. I like the, the comfort of having bubble wrap in there, making sure that they are well protected in storage. But as long as, you know, as long as you've got some protection there and nothing can fall on the boxes or fall on any, any parts of the item from, you know, storage at this side or wherever, then you should be all right. You know, it shouldn't be too bad. But I do like the kind of system I've got now because I, I feel comfortable with how I'm storing them. Um, but yeah, so what was I on to now? So I got four DVDs for four quid. Um, and I scanned one of them in and one of them, which was this one. Oh, no, not this one. This one was going for twelve ninety nine on FBA, 10000 in DVD and video or video DVD or Blu-ray and DVD or whatever it is now. But um, yeah, 10000 So it's not a terrible, terrible wank. Um, and twelve ninety nine, I'd say. So I thought, well, that's my money back and maybe a little bit of profit. Um, and I thought, well, well if a four or a four quid, I'm just going to go for it. Um, so I got that one. Um, and then that one's like nine quid. So there'll be a little bit more money in that. So maybe like 21 quid. And then that one, I think that one was scanning in at like 25 quid, but it was 63,000. And that's too high for me to really be thinking sending in. I know maybe other people might send in at that rank, but I don't really now. So um, I might see if there's any value on, on eBay for that. But if there isn't, then the two, the other two will just be maybe going back in the car boot pile and maybe get a quid each out of them or 50p each at the car boot. And it doesn't really matter what I get because, as I say, I've got my money and profit in those two. So that's what I do when I'm at the car boot. I try and buy, like, sealed media. I'll scan one of them in. And then if it pays for the, the job lot I'm thinking of buying, then I'll go on it. You know, save me scanning in every single one. There are some things, you know, there's some DVD box sets that I can just, I just know, you know, that you just know um, off previous experience of selling them. Uh, but those ones I didn't know, so I scanned a few, uh, I scanned a couple of them in. And, uh, yeah, thought I'd go on them for four quid. So that wasn't too bad. Um, so that was pottery, DVDs. Um, I got, I've not really got much else to show you, because I'll say that, was, well, I didn't actually say at the start of the video, but there was, Maybe about 30 cars down there in the end. Um, but when I got there, I woke up at 10 past 5. I can't believe it. That's like the earliest I've ever uh, got to, well, ever woke up to get to a car boot. And I uh, got there at maybe, I don't know, 5.35, 5.40. And uh, there was like four cars there or something. Not many buyers. Slowly but surely, loads of buyers came in. I mean, God, there must have been about five times the amount of dealers and resellers than actual cars four or five times so um it was really like well, you've got to be on it and obviously because this was the first car boot of the year i was a little bit rusty so um yeah i just kind of went around got what i could get um you know enjoyed the experience and that was that really but anyway just quickly look in the chat again see where we're at um uh, do, do, do. where are we let's have a look um, I want to do a car boot, but got way too much to lose, to loss, to lose. So trying to be good and not buying anything until it's all listed. Oh, to list. Oh, way too much to list. Oh, right, oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I have loads to list, but I'm kind of, I used to think it might be good to do a buying ban, like to, and, and I did that for a bit. I did do buying bans and stuff, but. I think now I'm just going to keep buying. As long as the price is right and I've got, and you know, my cash flow is good. There's no point in me, you know, having a buying ban. I'll just keep buying and buying and then um, obviously list it, you know, obviously listing as well. But as long as I'm quite strict with my process processing of the items and my listing the items, there should be some sort of flow. It's when you like just accumulate loads and loads of stuff and you then become a little bit lazy with your listing or something like that, then it becomes harder. Or maybe you're just accumulating loads and loads of stuff and you're still trying to list it, but you just physically can't get through it all. But I think that if you've got storage space, you can, you know, you can store it, then buy it. You know, the, the opportunities only come along once, you know, you might, if you don't take it, then you might not get it again. So, yeah, buying bands now, I'm probably not particularly going to do. Just keep buying when the opportunity comes up. But anyway, first item I uh, got, actually, there was, I'd say, four or five cars there, I don't know, something like that. And I walked over and I was walking around and thinking, oh, you know, it's not picking up much and I've not bought anything yet. So I 
I saw those two boxes of vintage annuals on the floor, and I looked at them about four times before I bought them. I don't know whether anyone else does that, where you like walk past them about four or five times, and then you finally think, right, yeah, I'm going to buy these. Um, but I, well, I said, well, I, I thought to myself, I'm going to ask at least. So I went and I asked sort of how much are your annuals, and he said, well, do you want all of them? And he, he was meaning one box uh, for all of them. So he said, you, if you give me a tenner, you can have the box. But I wanted both boxes. So I said, well, how much for both boxes? And he said 15. I ended up getting him down to 12 in the end. And I think it should be some okay money here. Um, I, it was just like a buy, like a, what I would call a safety buy. So at the start of the car route, I just bought these, you know, there'll be some money in them. Uh, to cover my petrol, my fees, and then a little bit of profit on top. But it was kind of a safety buy, you know, just so that then I've got going and stuff. But it was, you know, there's still going to be some okay money in there. Um, so I'll just show you these two. Um, so I basically, I won't go through every single one, because some of it's just standard, like, job lot stuff. Um, but I got this. I'll just flip back onto me again. Um, uh, how much you spend in total today? I'm not sure. I've got to write it. Or I've got to do me writing down uh, in a bit. But I could, well, I could probably tie it up now, actually. Um, what else have we got? 12 on there. One sec. 12, 16, uh, 19, um, 19, 23. Yeah, like 20. Is that right? 23. 24. 24 quid? Yeah, that can't be right. That's got, that's crazy. Three. 12, that's 15, 19 on, with the pottery, 24, yeah, 24 quid, that's it, and I've not even got the best, the best item to show you is, is at the end, and that's going to pay for all of this plus profit, so, uh, yeah, that actually, I've done pretty well, you know, when you, when you actually do that, and you look at it overall, the haul, you think, it's, you know, sometimes when you're going money, you're buying bits and pieces, you think, oh, should I have paid that for that item, but, Whenever you look at it on the overall scale, you always think, actually, I've come out pretty well. Um, so anyway, th this one is the Scouting the Scouts Annual or something. Uh, one sec. I mean, I had like 200 quid on me and I spent like 24 quid, so it's, it's hardly anything. Um, the Scout Annual, edited by Rex Hazelwood, 1962. And there's ones on for like 17 quid, 18 quid, but none have sold. So it's, I don't know. Um, but then I saw this one as well that I just, when I was just going through it a minute ago, the Girl, Girl Guide Daniel, and this is 1961. So I thought I know they're not completely a, a set pair, but I could probably sell them together and maybe put 15 to 20 on them since that one is listed for 17. But as I say, it's not sold, so maybe put like 15 to 20 on the both and see if that piques someone's interest. Um, but yeah, so that was those two anyway. I've got a Twinkle annual. Now, I've sold, I think I've sold a couple of these. Not this exact year. This is 1979. I think I might have sold a couple of uh, slightly earlier ones, maybe, I think, 76 or 77, maybe. And I've got around a tenner for them, maybe slightly less, so maybe eight quid, something like that. Um, but, yeah, Twinkle 1979. Um, I did look on eBay. They have sold for less than this, but most people have got them listed at around a tenner. So I'll probably go for similar, might have to accept a lower offer, but I'll probably list that one individually for, as I say, around a tenner. Um, and then there's this one that I didn't research, which is a bounty for girls. Again, it looks like a bit more of an earlier one, maybe like late 60s or something, I don't know. Because uh, this bounty for girls were more like 70s, so maybe it's early 70s or something. But um, yeah, so that one, I'm probably going to be job lot kind of thing, that one, but I, I will double check because... It's a bit of a different cover than I've seen, so it might be worth individual. Eagle Annual 1973, not sure on that one. But again, if it's not going to be a tenner or there or thereabouts, I'm going to be job lotting it in a little job lot. Um, and then the rest, there's this like 365 things to know. I don't know if there's going to be any money in that there. But I'll research it and see. Otherwise, I don't know what I'm going to do with it, to be honest, because there's not really anything else to job lot it with in this haul. And then I've got, like, a load of these. And these bundle up okay, although saying that, there's probably a couple that I'll just need to chuck. Um, these are just Beano and Dandy. Now, you need to do sort of slightly bigger job lots of these to actually get any sort of money. So, you know, I need to be selling these in maybe about 10 
something like that, maybe seven to ten of them at a time. And even that's going to get you maybe ten pound pound plus postage, maybe a little bit more if you're lucky, maybe fifteen. Um, but I've got quite a few. I've got th those ones, and then I've got those there. And there's a few beezers in there, although, as I say, I might have to just get rid of that one. I'm not sure. Unless someone wants it in the job lot, but I don't particularly like selling, you know, with proper whipped covers and stuff. It's not great. Um, and then I've got, like, Tom and Jerry ones. Uh, so I've got, like, Tom and Jerry, Tom and Jerry. Might bundle up okay. I'm not sure. If not, I'll just throw, maybe throw them in with another job lot. I've got Whistle and Chips. I don't know if I showed you that one. I've got, and then loads of others like Danger Mouse and da 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 da. Anyway, there's nothing, doesn't seem to be anything amazing. Now, I've not researched the rest of these, but there's, that was just a Christmas Carol. Journey to the Blue Lake, that intrigued me. However, I don't even, I think the paper's been whipped out or something. I missed one. One sec. Oh no, maybe it hasn't. Maybe it's just a thin book. I think it's, oh no, it don't know. It does look like, yeah, the paper's been whipped out on that one. So that's a shame. Don't know whether you can see there. Like that corner there has been whipped out. So that'll just go. Um, we've got Rupert. Now, some Rupert annuals do okay. I think there's like a rare variant of a Rupert album. Uh, I don't know which year it is. But if, if Rupert has like a white face or something, or, or a brown face on one of the years, it's meant to be like a rare variant. But again, if they're just standard ones, you can bundle them up. I'll check if this is like some sort of rare one, but I don't think it is. Um, so I'll probably wait for a few more Rupert annuals for that one. And then there's just loads more, like just loads more. Um, that one intrigued me as well, Bumper Cowboy Book, although it's seen better days, obviously. Um, but I'll have to double check that one. And then there's another Bounty, so maybe a, a Bunty. Is it Bunty? Oh, it's Bunty. It's not Bounty, it's Bunty. Um, so I might bundle that up with the other Bounty, Bunty even. Cartoon aid book. Anyway, loads and loads of books for the 12 quid. So I'm probably in, in them for less than 50p a book. So, yeah, The Incredible Hulk and then Scorcher, which, again, this is like a football book. These, you need to bundle up. You need to do them in bigger bundles or else they just, they're just not worth it. Uh, a lot of these, you know, what what's the other one? Shoot. I think the shoot annuals as well or shoot magazines. You do better in bundles. Obviously, there might be a few that are worth selling individually. But a lot of them are just, you know, doing them in bundles. Um, so that's those. So I'll quickly look back in the chat. Where are we? Love the um, Dandy and Beano annuals. Um, sure did. And then did they do? Let's check. I mean, it's just a load of chat. Uh, annuals are hard to sell due to the nature of condition and pages worked out. It, they are. That's why I'm saying, like, the ones that have got... Um, you know, the pit, like the uh, what did we put the spines, the ones that have got spines whipped and stuff. They might, I, I could probably charity them or something, and maybe someone will stick them out for 99p, and maybe the charity will get some money. But it just, yeah, as I say, as as you've said, Peter, they're just hard to sell. So as I say, I'll just job lot up the ones that are in better condition. Um, so where else? Who else have we got in here? We got uh, we sell a niche in here. Um, uh. Do, do, do. Where are we? Uh, Jason says, I had eagle annuals as a kid. I'm sure a lot of you had a few of those annuals when you were a kid. A few of the ones I've just shown. Um, do, do. Bounty for girls. No, I meant bunty. Sorry. sorry. I, I always call it bounty. Um, Celtic Trace says, I loved my twinkle an annuals. I, I honest, Before I started reaching, I didn't know half of these like, annuals existed. Um, did you do? I sold a goodies vintage annual that was signed by the goodies. Oh, and he, and he, uh, Peter says only fifteen pound. Oh, but you would have thought you got more than fifteen quid for that, especially if signed. Um, I've never seen any like goodies annuals or anything like that. Um, I think that's about it. Everyone's just sort of chatting, having a chat. Um, um, was anyone here a guide or scout? I was a guide. I did. I think I did like um beavers or scouts or something for a little time like a short time not long maybe like six months or something um so yeah that seems to be it so i'll show you the last item i, th I think this is the last item oh and then we've got some more there is a few more books in here even i did get quite a lot of books actually um there is a few more books in in a bag that i just sort of saw treasure island um that might be worth selling individual i don't know it might not be but it looks like a vintage one don't know, but if not, it's going in a bundle. 
the blue story, but again, this one's seen better days, really, as you can see. But yeah, story, but uh, 12 magic months, again, this one's like, these are poor condition, these ones. And then, but these are, these are older, actually. And then play our annual 1958. So, yeah. Don't know. Um, oh, I saw that. I did research that one. Uh, that one was like 6 99 or something. I'll probably bundle it because I don't really want to list it for 6 99 um, But anyway, final item, which is really, really, really good. And I didn't think it was going to be really good. Funny thing on this. I um, went over to this guy's store. Uh, it was actually a guy I saw two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Another car boot who was, you know, who was selling back then at that one. And um, he, there was like this, there was this ink cartridge in the the boot, and I was looking at it and waiting for him to bring it out on the table. You know, a few people were flooding around, and uh, I was in prime position. You know, when you're in prime position on like in like a store, you know, load of people around you, and then you just manage to get into the prime position, and you're like, yeah, I'm using my body as a shield. I'm getting this here, and I, I love that. But I never get in that position. I'm always the guy like right looking over someone else's shoulder. But um, no, today I actually got in prime position once, and um, yeah, I saw this, and I said, how much do you want for it? And he said, three quid, and I was like, oh, you know, and I said, would you take two? Because I really didn't think this specific one was worth that much, and I thought I might get ten quid or something out of it, but obviously it just shows I don't know my ink, uh, my ink cartridges, but um, he said, no, I won't take two, and then I said, right, I'll give you a three, and I'm so glad, I'm so glad I gave him a three. Um, because this is actually, well, on Amazon, it's like 74 quid or something. Um, on eBay, it's gone from anywhere between about 50, 55 to, I think, maybe high of about 60, 65. Probably just bung it on eBay, to be honest. I don't really know the, um, the rules around selling ink on Amazon. I know that Nick sends a lot of ink and stuff up there, but I'm sure someone said about, there's been some sort of regulations with the expiry date. Now, this expiry date, it's in date. It's uh, 29, the 4th of 2019. Uh, sorry, the 4th, April 2019 is what I'm trying to say, the 4th month. Um, and it's this brother. Uh, feel free to look it up if you want. I'll read off the number as well. Uh, the number is brother LC129XL. So if you type that in eBay or anything, if you're curious to know how much it goes for, then, uh, yeah, be my guest. So, brand new and sealed. Really, really happy with that one. When I got home, I researched it, and I didn't think it would be worth, you know, I thought maybe it'd be, I'd say, 10, 12 quid, something like that, maybe a bit more. But really, really happy with that. As, obviously, as you can see, it pays for everything here if I get, you know, if I get 60, 70 quid for this. But I'm very much of a mentality, like a lot of people are, um, of the profit is made on the buy. You know, if something sells for, 60, 70 quid, and you paid three quid for it. Essentially, yes, you've not sold it yet, but whenever you decide to sell it, as long as that market stays at that sort of level, the profit has been made on the buy rather than on the sell. You know, you pay 20 quid for something at the car boot and it only goes for 20 quid, you won't make profit on it. You know, we, there's not really much chance of you making profit. So I always think profit is on the buy. So uh, yeah, anyway, if I sell this at the 60, 70 quid, or well, 60 quid or something, then that pays for everything here, and then everything else, you know, whatever I get for it is just bonus money on top, really, as well as the profit that I made from this. So, yeah, pretty cool. Quite happy, really, there, considering that that was actually one of the higher value items I got today, because most other things were just bread and butter. So, quite happy to research that and actually know that I got a higher value item. So, yeah, quite a, um, well, I wouldn't say really decent start to the car boots, but, you know, it was all right, not too bad. Um, first time out, you know, a little bit busty, I wasn't particularly with it, but, um, no, I think that was an okay start to the car boots anyway, uh, well, the outdoor ones anyway, um, was just about to go live and realised I'd be clashing with ads, yeah, I didn't check Carla, I, I, funny thing was, you came to mind as soon as I was thinking to do a live stream this morning, I thought, I wonder if Carla's going to do a live stream, because I know that, uh, you do a lot of the, uh, car boot live streams now, so, I didn't actually check whether you were on or anything, so I'm glad that I don't think anyone else is on, so that's pretty decent, um, but I'm going to be finishing up in a second anyway, I'll just, if anyone's got any more questions in the chat, then feel free, and, uh, you know, if not, then I'll finish up and then let Carla get on with hers, um, 
So, oh, here we go. Uh, do, Peter Cummings says, oh, no, he's, no, that's to Peter Way. Uh, do, 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 have you got uh, much left? Ad? No, I'll say I've done. I've done. So if anyone else has got any more questions, then I'll answer them very quickly. If not, I will wrap it up here and then I will go over and be in the chat for Carla's uh, recite, uh, for Carla's car boot haul even. So, uh, yeah. Uh, thank you for watching me, guys. If you enjoyed the video, as always, give it a like down below. If you've got any comments or questions, uh, you know, if you're watching this back on the replay, then please feel free to comment them down below. And I will see you in the next one, guys. So thank you for joining me, all the people in the chat. And I will see you very soon. So see you soon, guys.